Yes, yes, y'all, and you don't stop. So I drew a little inspiration the other day from being actually at a subway platform the other day. Is I was like, you know what would be a cool display? Like a Mortal Kombat 3 inspired subway platform. Um, I saw Al Figures did a subway years and years ago, and uh, his turned out awesome. So I remembered some of the things that he did with his, and I wanted to try, I don't know, going a similar yet slightly different direction for mine. So what we're looking at here is just a couple of dowels that are zip tied to this piece of foam and uh, the bigger one is hot glued as well just to keep it you know in place so that there's not so much weight on those zip ties and this will be like kind of the front of it. Now the other support is just another one of these pieces of foam but it's not going to have anything on it. I probably won't even need to paint it because it's just going to be there for support. So here's kind of what it looks like so far. Um, Obviously, no paint, no real detail work done yet, so I am going to get to work on some of that, but this is just for scale purpose. There's Reptile from Storm Collectibles, so that you'll be able to tell exactly, um, I don't know, just how big this piece is going to be when it's done. And I do want to include, like, you know, some pillars with, like, some signs and, like, uh, maybe a staircase or an elevator off to one side. I haven't decided completely yet, but I don't know. Maybe the ground, too, with the tracks. In fact, definitely the ground with the tracks. Why not? So I added another uh, Lego set to the collection here. This is the set where the Emperor turns Anakin Skywalker into Darth Vader at the end of Revenge of the Sith. Comes with the Emperor. So, yeah, of course I was on board with that. And obviously you get a burnt up, beat up Anakin Skywalker that you then twist this thing and turn him into Darth Vader. What, what? That's right. You get a little medical droid thing here too and whatever this guy is. Yeah, Legos have gotten pretty serious over the years. Just take a look at this. Just slide the helmet on there. Bomb. And now you got Darth Vader. What? And you can, of course, just bring him up and have him be like, No! When, you know, in one of the most interesting moments in Star Wars cinematic history. And by interesting, I think I probably mean stupid. But the characters are cool. The uh, set is nice. I had fun making it. Me and the girlfriend made this one last night. So, I don't know, it's just something to do. We kill some time building some Lego sets, and I think this is the fourth one I have now. So, yeah, I'm digging it. It's got the land speeder too. This one made, uh, I've had this for a couple of years, but I only just made it kind of uh, less than a month ago. But yeah, I don't know. These things are cool. I like them. I like how they managed to get like all the things about Star Wars into like these little sets. Um, I've showed those previously, the Millennium Falcon and the ATST. They're cool. I love them. I don't know, I've always thought about maybe trying to animate with these guys. I know there's a bunch of channels that do like Lego animation and a lot of it is pretty awesome actually. So I mean, I think I got enough stuff now to make kind of an interesting little just video, even if it's just like random little clips here and there. I don't know. Pretty cool, I think. Would you be interested in that? Let me know. So here's what we're looking at after the first little uh, paint application here. The main platform looking decent. Right now it's basically just uh, concrete with um, you know, a little yellow section. And I'm going to have like little, I guess, warning labels to kind of like stay uh, back behind the yellow line or whatever. And then this thing, that's like, crap. And then this piece, um, I started to weather it a little bit. I do like how it came out, but, you know, I obviously want to go through and get a little bit more... Um, you know, detailing on that as far as color goes, but you can see that it started as gray and then I kind of put a little bit of brown on it. Um, I'm gonna get some like red too to kind of like make it look a little rusty. And lastly, probably a little bit of gold or something for the pipe just to make it look like it's still got some luster and some metallic property to it. Still got this set up. I was thinking about switching this out now that I got a couple of the new figures, putting Sauron in here or something. I don't know, it's cool. Over here we have my Ken Shamrock figure that I repainted the head and we have another one that I got that has the decal or the I should say the details on the trunks because my original one you may remember did not so I'm gonna put this head on that body and finally have a complete Ken Shamrock figure ah uh, so the things I have to do to make things work around here speaking of work oh yeah welcome to Rite of Passage this is JWF's newest set for the upcoming show, which uh, will feature the main event, Chris Jericho against Shawn Michaels for the Intercontinental title, and will also feature the match between The Undertaker and Sting, the long-awaited showdown that those two are going to have. Um, so I went with a completely 
different kind of theme this time around. I was like, eh, you know, Undertaker's a big part of it, so let's get some tombstones and whatnot. But I thought it was cool that the little tombstone had like a crow on it too. I mean, maybe that's supposed to be a raven, but whatever. It's going to be a crow. So, you know, you got your little sting reference too. Um, yeah, I don't know. The arena, I just thought it looked pretty cool. I'm going with it. I've already started filming Jericho and Michaels. My plan is to film it basically backwards. So in other words, I'm going to do the main event first. I'm going to do Undertaker Sting after that. And then I'm going to do the unannounced third match on the card, which uh, I'm not going to announce here. I don't want to spoil it yet. But basically what's going to happen, and I'll come around this side here. Basically what's going to happen is if I do it backwards like that, then that means by the time I finish part one, Parts two and three are already going to be done, which means you as an audience will not have to wait long in between parts. Because I know I've slipped a few times, let's just say. Everybody that remembers Collision knows they were waiting around for like two years in between parts two and three. So I don't want to do that. And I've been having a lot of fun animating this wrestling stuff now because I did buy this camera, this beautiful camera off of Burnout Inc., which works with Dragon Frame, which I've been getting a lot of fun um, using that program. I never used it before a couple of weeks ago. And i got to tell you, it's making things really easy for me and kind of reinvigorated my interest in wrestling for a little bit. So I'm going to ride that wave. So yeah, look forward to more announcements on JWF Rite of Passage. Um, I officially announced it in my live stream on Wednesday night, the captain's log. So I do Wednesday night live streams, 8 p.m. Eastern. If you'd like to come, I don't know, hang out in the chat feel free. I usually get a pretty good turnout of regulars that pop in, so we have a good time. So here's what we're looking at. We got the platform done, looking pretty nice. You got the uh, the start, I guess, of the track. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to go through and put like the details of the track itself on there, and I want to do something a little bit more with these, um, whatever you would call these things, I don't even know. But, you know, I want to get something up on the top there to kind of indicate the electric going through it and all that. But yeah, um, I like how it's turning out, but the problem that I'm having is now that I've made it, where am I going to put it? Because it, it turned out a little bit bigger than I expected it to be. I don't know what I was thinking when I started this project. I knew, I think I basically just wanted to do like the platform part of it. And then I was like, well, what good is the platform if you don't have the track? Luckily, this is a separate piece. So, I mean, if I want to just have the platform displayed, I can. But, I don't know, to me, it kind of just looks better with the... The full scene here. Problem is, the full scene is not going to fit on one of those shelves, and it's not going to fit pretty much anywhere. So I don't know. So I know I've gone over this on like my live stream and stuff on the captain's log, but this Mortal Kombat line by Storm Collectibles is my favorite figure line going right now. I mean, just look at these guys. They're freaking awesome. So that's kind of why I wanted to make that diorama, is uh, you know, as a a way to show these guys off, I guess. But you know. Now that I realize just how giant that diorama is, definitely not going to fit on this shelf. So, you know, I'm going to have to come up with something, I guess. Also down here, got a couple of Mount Man's Godzilla figures. I started building like a little, just like, I don't know, like a little city base. I didn't do much with it yet. Um, these are just some buildings I've made a long while ago. And I try to make like a impact crater in the ground there like that. I want to do something a little bit cooler with the roads. I don't know if I'm going to have to do like printouts of the roads because I don't think I can paint that many straight lines on that small of a scale. So, I don't know. But it's fun though. It's cool. Then there's this piece over here which I'm not sure I've ever shown on Between the Frames. But it's basically just a city building. I wanted to make it like kind of a like a storefront on the bottom half with like an apartment on the top half. <clears throat> Something that you would see a lot in like cities and just whatnot. Um, obviously I got figures all over the place so None of this is going to make much sense, but, uh, yeah, I want to, you know, a little pattern on the rooftop like that. Um, this, by the way, this Chris Jericho is like just a head swap I made. I really like how it turned out. I like this head sculpt for Jericho. I think it's the best one they've done from this time period and, uh, looks just like him. So that's what I did there. Here's the head that came on him on that body. So yeah, good stuff. I printed out a bunch of posters of just... I don't know, music and whatnot that you might find on the side of a building. Um, up here you got like the smaller ones and like the window ad would have, you know, just like cigarettes and beer and stuff that they would sell inside whatever this store is going to be. Um, I left it with tracing paper on the other side of the window because that way if I wanted to light it up, 
I could. And, like I could put a light on the inside and that tracing paper would catch the light. And it's the same thing up here too with that window. And also on this one here, if you'll excuse Frieza. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to put lights inside it, you could illuminate the inside of the building and that would catch and look pretty cool. So this is the fire escape. It's not 100% done, obviously. I want to like paint a little bit of weathering on it because right now it's just kind of a flat black. But yeah, it just plugs into the side of the building. You see a couple of holes there and this, um, this is enough to support it. I'm not going to be able to do this with one hand, but you get the idea. Um, I want to do like a ladder that goes up here. I in fact started building it and I don't have it on hand right now, but you know, just to be able to have it like go from here to the ground level. This dumpster is just here for show. This is from Wrestling Superstore. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do if I'm going to leave it there because it wouldn't make much sense to have a ladder that leads down to a dumpster, but I don't know. It's just for decoration right now.